Welcome back, adventurers. This is James Swain, a.k.a. Copernicus Heart, and we are back. The Natty 19 Podcast. Don't worry about our fearless DM. He managed to survive that vicious zombie attack on the studio at the end of last week, and he'll be here with us in just a minute. Speaking of zombie attacks, I'm really not feeling too good about the current situation the party has found themselves in. But we'll get to that shortly. First, now that I got you here all alone, I got something to talk about. I've been watching our download count, and the Natty 19 crew is pumped about the amount of people that have checked us out. You guys are awesome. In a little over a month now, we have topped the amount of unique downloads I thought we'd get in a year. And we're just nine episodes in. So if you're still here listening, we can't thank you enough. I just got one thing to ask. Well, maybe a couple things, but the first thing I'm going to ask, tell a friend. The only way we're going to grow and reach more ears is by word of mouth. So if you know anyone else in the podcast or D&D, let them know about us. And another really helpful thing would be written reviews on iTunes. If you guys could go over there and hook us up, that would be great. And you can always send us a personal message at natty19podcast at gmail.com. And you never know. Maybe we'll use your name as the name of one of our next NPCs, like Joe the Jungle Guide. It's got a nice ring to it. All right, enough out of me. Let's get on with the show. Please enjoy Episode 9, Sturge Burst. Before we jump in, let me give a quick recap of where we ended it last week. Uh, While traversing the river in your final stretch here, you guys happened upon a handful of what we're now calling zombies. And through diplomacy, that handful had alerted more who then began slowly spilling out of the jungle and into the river. And while you were confident you could outrun them in your canoes... Uh, you realize that more were spilling in up ahead and your boats were moving over them. And when they began grabbing your boat to climb aboard, uh, stopping your progression in the process, uh, I think that's when um, the situation upgraded from caution to deadly. Now, Zavril and Zim would be, you guys are about in the clear now. Okay. Um, but you look back and you see their boat is being swarmed. Um, you count at least four zombies had grabbed a hold of it and they're trying to climb up on board and they're just, you see those guys just doing everything they can to get them off. Where'd we leave off on the initiative? Copernicus? Thought it was Irame. It's Irame. Or Irame, top of the round. Yep. Okay. Um, so... I'm sorry to have to go back to this, but the dual wielding, there's no attack bonus, just my strength. No, there's a proficiency bonus, but no strength bonus or dex bonus. Okay, so first one is six. All right, that's not enough to get to, right. to get it off. Second one is 10. That is enough to get one off. You've got three left as Arame uh, wrangles one of them off into the water. All right, next up is Copernicus. Yeah, we're just going to keep fighting them off. So, daggers in hand. First strike. Uh, Ooh, and a little 13. Yep, you get another one off. Two left. So, next strike, no bonus. Kind of floats along the surface of the water behind you guys for a bit and then sinks back down. Or just proficiency bonus on the second strike. Just, just proficiency okay. bonus. I'm pretty sure. Nah. Oh, no, seven. Yeah. Not happening. All right. No. Nope. So yeah. Two hands so left. two two left. Yep. And you guys are ground to a halt. Quincy. <laughs> All right. Uh, Quincy will. Um, uh, he'll kick one of them. 
for uh okay, eighteen. Yeah, you got it. Yep, you managed to kick kick uh the third one off. And I'm not sure if a uh I guess I'll try to st- strike the other hand with the rapier. One more, Quincy. Twenty. Yes. Yes. Yep. So boom, you managed to free yourself. You fumble for the paddle. And you get moving again. And you make it it seems you make it through the horde and you see them all behind you and while this is happening now now that you're kind of collecting yourself and you have a moment to look around a couple things you notice you notice along the water behind you there are some other creatures that look a little bit more intelligent I should say these ones aren't going into the water they're just kind of you know, along the water, like kind of following along you as you guys are going. And their black eyes, they're just fixed on you and they're not turning away. They're just kind of, you know, sludging through the mud on the riverbank, you know, strafing alongside as you guys go. They're humanoid though, walking Oh yeah, on they're, like, they're like ghoulish looking. They're hunched over, elongated arms, and they're just kind of like strafe hopping. Perhaps we should continue up the river. You don't want to yeah. say hi, Quincy. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they sound like <laughs> in case anyone was wondering <laughs> and one of them opens his mouth <laughs> and it like <laughs> big old teeth come <laughs> a viney tongue fucking whips out and grabs a hold of you <laughs> no no um they're just kind of strafing along like Agitated that they can't, but they're not going into the water. You find that peculiar. We also, seem safe here. Let's move quickly. As you see that on the other side, um, it's hard to pull your attention away. They're kind of intimidating, but when you finally do, because you, you guys are going faster than them, now you look over on the right side of the river and you notice something else. Something a little different, but something else nonetheless. You see almost like uh, a, 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 a large stake stuck in the ground, like a post of sorts, like a cross. And hanging from it, all different kinds of skeleton uh, limbs, you know, feet and hands skulls tons of skulls just covering it of all different creatures you see human skulls and you know prime you know primate skulls and you also see like you know rep- reptilian skulls bones teeth hanging from it looks like a very primitive bone uh cross. marking marker of sorts yeah a cross and you don't just see one of these you start to notice a few of them that are just kind of lining the river. What do you think they are? You think they're wards or just markings? I was thinking the same. And this wasn't here the last time Zimwabi came down the river? Yes, these are known to me. Zinti territory markers. Ah. Though I remember them being much deeper into the jungle, Masa. With the dead in our wake, we should take to land. We are too easily spotted on the water. How are we going to make our way back? We'll be safe on land? Doubtful. From D- the Define undead. safe. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to stay in the opposite bank of the undead, but it, it appears even our trek back will be over land. I mean, the undead are, have ceased at this point, you know. Uh, they're, they're in you guys' wake. Right, but I'm talking about when we turn back to go back to Nyanzaro. They'll probably be passed by then. Who knows? I'd rather be in a boat keeping their hands off than on land. There doesn't appear to be All any right. single undead on the right side of the river. Just these skeletal territory markers. Mm. All right. How close are we to the ambush point? Uh, we have passed the ambush point, my friend. That says I feared. I apologize. I, these... I did not want to stop. <laughs> I think these Zinti are... This is the Zinti. They are the undead. I have never seen Zinti look like that before, Copernicus. If they bore no marks, then 
perhaps is India still yet another threat. So we have been fending off the zombies for a couple hours now. Um, yeah, you're not sure how long it took. It definitely did not feel like a couple hours at all. Well, he said that it was up. He said we were a couple hours away from the point. Yeah, he also said he knows that the markers were deeper in, so it seems like they were pushed up the river some. I think that's what the issue is. Yeah, there's no real... Things have, things have changed is what happened. Um, the Zinti territory has expanded, maybe. That's what it seems like. Right. Well, let so, us hide our canoes and and then figure out how to proceed. All right, you guys pull your canoes up easy enough. Irma is uh, almost regretting not turning around once she had the charter in her hand. Well, at this point, the fog, while still hovering in the air, is thinned out um, considerably. Your visibility is restored for the most part. Uh, pretty much all but vistas are available to you, um, you know. So looking in the distance, like the mountain peaks that you could see along the river, still all foggy. You can't see that far. But you got a good range um, that you can see now. Uh, Zimbabwe B, <clears throat> B begins to lead the trek into the jungle once you secure your canoes and hide them adequately. Uh, you notice he's keeping the markers at a safe distance, but he's still following them along inland. Uh, he sets a slow pace, periodically pausing to scout the surroundings for any dangers lying in wait. Um, for the most part, the jungle seems unusually still with no real obstacles apart from carving your way through some thick portions um, and scaling some small inclines as you begin to uh, elevate inland. The surroundings begin to darken earlier than usual due to the jungle canopy overhead blocking the sun almost completely. And right as evening approaches, now you guys have been out there for a while, I'm kind of doing a time lapse, you know. Right as evening approaches, you come across a rock face that stretches as far as the eye can see in either direction to the left and right. You know, you can't see too far. <laughs> That sound I made it sound like you could see as far as the eye can see, but it is the jungle. So, you know, right. uh, yeah. So to the left and right, it's just this rock face. Up, it's it's about thirty feet tall, stretching up into the canopy. You can't really see what's up there. Uh, you can tell there's more of an incline, more of a, you know, it goes higher. But this this particular ledge only is only about thirty feet up. It looks climbable. Um, easily enough without any specialized equipment. Maybe if we go up there, we can look down into Zinti territory. I agree, RMA. I have been following a series of tracks that are scattered throughout this region. We could certainly scale this face to try for a better lay of the area, for it has been many years since I have been here. Though tracks move along the base to the left and right, it is not uncommon for people to travel along, along such landmarks to avoid getting lost. Though, if I had to guess, based on the markers we saw, these tracks are zinty. He looks up to the left and, and to the right, and he continues. From this point, if we head left, it should take us to a tunnel system that leads down through the ridge. To the right, there is a path that leads up over the ridge and down to the other side, though I imagine that way would be most closely observed. The cave at one point was used to gather copper years ago. The copper had depleted, but still proved to be a useful source of mica. <laughs> <laughs> There's no telling what manner of beast has laid claim to its depths these days. And if we scale the cliffs... If you would like, I could go up myself, or it, it looks like an easy enough climb. There's fo plenty of footholds. You don't, if you've got rope, you can do it with an advantage. Yeah, I have rope. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a pretty easy climb. It looks like it's been climbed before. So, but, but either way, it's up to you guys. So, yeah, he we pretty can go much... go over or under this, this mountain, pretty much, or uh, ridge. maybe ridge. Yeah. 
He says, I see an advantage to both. The climb is, a, you know, is a, an obstacle for sure. However, it would give us a better view of what we are walking into. Whereas if we take the tunnel system... Can we climb uh, to get to vantage point and then come back down and then take the tunnel? So we climb together intelligence. Yes. Yeah. And yep. then attempt to stealthily arrive. What do you think, several? I think we should uh, climb it personally. Well, let, let us see what's up there then. You could use your rope. All right, you set up the rope easy enough. Uh, let's see. Let me. Uh, Zim will be will take point. All right, Zim will be gracefully climbs up using Zavril's rope. Is it a gra- do you, wait? Do you have a grappling hook? No, but I do. <laughs> I fashioned it to his rope before we threw it up there. Okay, yeah. fair enough. All right. Yeah, the movie makes it up uh, easy enough. Quincy will follow. Yeah. Uh, that would be... Athletics? Uh, 16. Yeah, Quincy, you get, you get advantage too. Yeah, so, but yeah, you make it up. Um, yep, so Quincy's and would be is up. I'll wait for everyone else to go. All right. All right. Irma will go next. Irma. 18. All right. Looks like a 19. Yeah. I have minus one. You have a minus one. (laughs) I have a minus one. (laughs) But it is a natural 19. All right. Uh, Irma. Kind of takes the steam out when Uh, when you have a minus one. Minus (laughs) one. (laughs) See if anyone falls. What check was it? Athletics check. 11. You have an advantage. Nine. <laughs> <laughs> you make it up. Barely. DC, it's DC 10. 16. All right, let's go. Copernicus come crawling up behind you guys. Copernicus takes it up the rear as you guys make it to the top. <laughs> <laughs> as you guys make it to the top, and you see now in front of you, it's a, another ledge, maybe about five feet wide, and it wraps around maybe, you know, 20 feet or so, and there's another climbing point. Only this one is only about 10 feet high. And up above now, you can see it. You can't see above it, actually, at all from where you're standing. But another climb. All right. One, one final one. Everybody, uh, yeah. Zim will it's be throwing it up again. It's... Yeah, bang it out. Eighteen again. We're good. Twelve. All right. Mm, Twenty-one. All right. What do you got, Zaves? Fifteen. All right. Everybody makes it up top to this one now. Once up top. Moving maybe 100 feet or so through some more thicket once you get up there. Zimbabwe starts leading through once again. Now you make it to the other side of the small ridge. And looking down, maybe about 60 feet down at this point, and a few hundred feet out, maybe four or 500 feet, you notice a a small settlement down below. And from this distance, it's difficult to make out the finer details, but what you can notice is that there aren't many lights. There are several fire lights within, though quite sparse compared to what you would have expected from a village of such a size with night soon arriving. You know, normally you would expect some everyone to get the fires lit before darkness is upon you. After staring fixed for a bit in the fading sunlight, you can make out movement surrounding a large, unfinished obelisk. How number? Can we see a number? Should we roll or? It looks like uh, ants at this point. It's, you know, I mean, there. This is definitely get... a settlement. They're not like nomadic. It's it's a, yeah. it's a settlement. Yeah. And Zimwabi is looking down, confused. 
Is this not what you expected to see, Zimobi? It has been many years since I have been here, my friend. You are looking at the Taguta village. Your old home. Yes, Copernicus. It's where Zimobi used to live. At any rate, I do not remember this obelisk being here. This is troubling. And the Taguta are long but gone. These must be the Zinti occupying what is left of my village. Do we have to uh, backtrack from here or is there a way down into this? So to the right, so you guys are up on top of a ridge. If you If you move along to the right, along top of the ridge, it'll eventually take you to those switchbacks that then go down, but he said that those were closely, probably closely observed. We would be visible. Right. The only other way down, and this cliff looking downward, it's climbable for sure, but it looks like it would be tougher than the original climb. Hmm. Uh, What about rappelling with a rope? Yep, that would give you an advantage on on the check. This is a 60-foot climb. It's going to be a few checks. What if we went back down the original way we came? Yep, you could do that. And then took the tunnels? Yep, you, you could definitely do that. Go down one side or the other. Would we have time to go through the cave? Um, would we still come out at night to Give me a, the uh, village? Per- oh, n- night is like upon you at mm-hmm. this point. I know, but if we were to backtrack yep. and then take the cave, would mm-hmm. we that would we make it to um the, the village film. before with still night time left. Oh yeah. Before before nightfall. On. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. It's okay. only yeah, it's only about five hundred it's yeah, the village is is it's Good. only about five hundred feet out. Okay. You know? Yep. No, oh, we came this far. Let's drop a rope and climb down. I was going to say, make, give me a perception check, uh, right. everybody. Natty 20. Ooh. Natty 20. All right. 17. Which makes it a uh, 22. Not that it matters after that one. <laughs> Hold on. I passed my perception check. Whoa. Wow. With an 18. <laughs> Righteous. That's well done. That's tonight. You're really perceptive. On a evening. roll. Uh, 13. for. Coming. All right. So everybody with an 18 plus notices... A small opening uh, in the ground, a rocky opening leading down into darkness. Should we venture? Does it look like it lead down and then into the village? Uh, Zimwa B does not remember this being here. I do not remember this. This must be new. Perhaps a cave in into the tunnel system at some point. It could give us mm. some cover. Yes. If I had to guess, this does seem to line up with the tunnels below. Could save us a climb if we just went down this way. Though, and he looks down and he puts his finger. He rubs something, some sort of substance. Looks like dung of some sorts. He smells it. Tastes it. (laughs) (laughs) It's getting right into it. (laughs) Yep, putting it on like makeup. No, he um, says, Sturges. Should not be a problem if there are not too many. What's a Sturge? They're like bats. Yeah. Blood-sucking bats. Hmm. They are fairly easy to deal with. When, uh, when Zimwa B was a child, we would come into these caves and clear them out whenever they made their homes here. I did not realize we'd be coming upon your village, Zimwa B. I did not intend to, but when I saw, when I recognized the, the terrain, I figured while we are here, that it would be a good place to check. And with the Zinti markers nearby, I had a bad feeling about what we would come across. Do you think those lost adventurers are down there? If not, I do not know where they would be. We would have to... I was hoping that perhaps we could follow their tracks to their village, but it would seem all tracks in this region, as of late anyway, 
lead here. It's a good start. If they're not there. There is definitely something going on down there. Well, let us go into the caves. All right. Several, you first. <laughs> he uh, goes on to say while Zavril is hooking up the rope. He says, the Zinti were never builders. This obelisk troubles me. So, Zavril, you get the rope hooked up. Uh, you got the rope yep. hooked and up. So everybody make, uh, give me give me a climb check going down. Advantage? Yep. I've rolled all but one of my 20-sided die off the table. Zimwa B goes down first. Natty 19. Ooh. Ooh. Went down a rope like a fireman. There it is. Ooh, Natty 20. Nice. Always gonna wanna. <laughs> <laughs> I got an 11 and a 10. All right. Zavril slips halfway down, slips. but he catches himself. <laughs> Copernicus rolled a seven. Copernicus. Ooh. Was he above one of us? I think oh, I Copernicus's went last. ass falling on last. me. Copernicus uh, slips. You were about ten feet down when you lost grip. Or you were ten feet from from the floor when you lost your, your grip and you uh, managed to fall down below. You guys see Copernicus um, loses loses footing, laying prone on the ground. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, he's gonna take some damage unless one of you guys tries to um, make a reflex save, maybe to help soften the fall. That be dexterity in five e. Dexterity check, yeah. Okay. Um, Can I aid his check? Um, no. Yeah. No. Quincy will try to catch him. Quincy, look out. <laughs> 16. Hmm. All right. Maybe. Yep. You managed to soften the blow for him. Copernicus, you take three damage coming down. Oh. Quincy, you fool. Stay out of the way next time. <laughs> <laughs> you really don't like anyone helping you, do you, Copernicus? All right. I'll, uh,. Let me pull out some of my mango leaf mixture and uh, mm. suck some of that down. Yep. For a hit point? I got five of them. I'll get myself back up to full. Is there... All right, so... What's the rule about... Is it up to five that yeah. you can... Yeah. Okay. So, so I can down three of them. So I'm Copernicus getting shit-faced or anything when we're trying to <laughs> fucking... <laughs> All right. Copernicus drink one. He likes it so much, he pops open a couple more. <laughs> yeah, if you eat more than five, then it knocks you unconscious. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. five in Puts a day. Puts you to sleep. Yeah. All right. So. Guys should try these mango leaves. They're pretty pretty good. <laughs> so right as you start <laughs> chewing on the leaves, Zimbo B. Shh, shh, shh. The ruckus from Copernicus mm. falling. You hear screeching, echoing mm. throughout the caves. <laughs> As a bunch of them. Is that Sirenscape? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're all about the, the sound effects tonight. I love it. Speaking of which, uh, did you use Sirenscape on that last episode? I've actually been using them on the uh, last couple episodes. Yeah. Yep. That was fucking awesome. Been hearing a lot about them, so I finally took the dive, checked them out. Yeah, do it. Keep doing it. It was sweet. I was listening back. I was like, holy shit, this is fucking awesome. Yeah, so, I mean, if anybody listening wants just amazing atmosphere and music for their D&D game, sirenscape.com. Let's do it. Nice. Anyway, let's get back. <laughs> <laughs> Got combat. <laughs> <laughs> I can't this way, this I don't have to do it. Does the Sirenscape have uh, st have Sturge's sound I, effects? I bet they do. That'd be Sweet. awesome. <laughs> Got to do it. All right. Now I'm thinking of the uh, Arrested Development, how they all have different chicken <laughs> sounds. <laughs> We're all sitting around the table trying to make Sturge's sounds. <laughs> They're all different. <laughs> making different wing flaps and head bobs. And <laughs> all right. 
Oh, jeez. <laughs> Blood-sucking How many are there? <laughs> Look at them all. Imagine right. hearing Colony. the wing flutter. The yeah, you hear some fluttering happening and screeching, all bouncing, echoing throughout this cavern. All right, it, it, it has opened up. You guys are in a cavern now. Um, pretty Quincy decent draws size. draws his here. All right, let's do this. All right. Roll for initiative. Roll for initiative. Nine. Fuck. Sorry. I'm going to wake up the kids. <laughs> <It's okay>. <laughs> <laughs> I got a nine. Hear me. I had a 14. Apparently, I didn't click on my uh, icon there first. A six for Quincy. Do you like my new glasses? I didn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> Who's failing their perception check now? Did you find those in Chultz? Yes, they're tinted for find the sun here. Find those in the jungle. Here. Take them off of a zombie. <laughs> All right, Copernicus, what'd you get for initiative? 19. <clears throat> All right, so as you hear the screeching and the wing buffets of this thing, of these uh, critters echoing all throughout the cavern, Right when, almost right when Zimwa B says, shh, be quiet, sturges, and immediately you see a swarm of these bat-like creatures, tiny, with almost like a syringe beak thing on their face, and they look almost transparent, you know, as they're coming at you, you can see like these vein, you know, veins through their flesh. We got initiative ready, and let's roll it. Round one. You got to fix my initiative. Oh, what's your initiative? 14. 14. Top of the round, Copernicus Heart. Copernicus will summon his sword from the shadow fell. <laughs> and cast Branding Smite on it. All and right. Hunk, hunker down. Next up, the Sturges. One of them flies over at Zavril. Uh, does an armor class 12 hit you by chance? I don't think no. so. No. Yeah, it just it goes to um, pierce you with its syringe, missing completely. Another one flies over Copernicus. Goes to, once again with its syringe. Fails to penetrate your armor. Another one flies over, get an Arame. Let's see if let's see if he can land a hit. No. Arame, you nimbly dodge out of the way. And the other ones just kind of fly. They're fluttering about frantically. And next up, Zimwa B goes. Zimwa B. Zimwa B sees what's going on. He's he's been here before. He's gonna run and jump right in there and stab at the one that attacked Arame. He misses as the Sturge flutters by the Yakoa. Damn you, Krita. Zavril, you're up. Zavril will take his whips out and equip them, and then will, while he's uh, kind of circling around towards the uh, one to the, the north there, uh, and then will a lash at it with his whip. All right. Let's see a roll. Uh, critical hit. Wow. For the first whip. All right. Zayrol is a beast. And then kills it. Whipping them right out of the air. Nice. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, which one did you hit now? So I can... Uh, the one the right... The one that right below me, yes. Oh, gotcha. Okay. I see it now. Yep. That kills it immediately. You just obliterate it. Uh, and then the other one's still within 10? It is. Yep. All right. Awesome just seeing it just drop to the ground when mm. Zabril strikes it. And that one's going to be a miss. Eight. <laughs> eight. Is, yeah, eight is, is a uh, miss. Yep. Yeah, so Zabril just winds his whips up. Whoop, boom, just cuts one right in half. Um, and the two pieces of it just smash against the, the cavern floor and misses with the other one as it dodges out of the way. Irame. Irame 
is going to grab her crystal and cast Firebolt at the one to the left of me on the screen there, closest to me. Okay. What is Aramae up to? 14? Nope. Sorry, I apologize. 16? 16's a hit. Max damage. Ooh. Nice. How much is max damage? (laughs) Um, Well, it's a D10, but do I add anything? It doesn't say to. Okay, then you don't. Yeah, I didn't think so. Okay, so 10. 10 damage to the one in front of you. Obliterates it. Yeah, so your firebolt shoots out, and the thing just disintegrates in in the air. Quincy's feeling a little... uh... Encouraged, maybe seeing how his allies are taking care of these things so easily. So he he's gonna rush toward the nearest one and stab at it with his rapier. Make a bat skewer. <laughs> Eleven. Eleven <sighs> misses. They are quick. <laughs> they are very quick. And as his hopes and dreams are crushed. Round two. Copernicus heart. Yeah, uh, Copernicus lines up the bat in his sights right in front of him and gives like an upswing with his long sword to try to cut it out of the air. Yes, you've got this, Copernicus. That is a 15? 15 is a hit. <laughs> <laughs> that branding s- smite is a little overkill, I think, for this. <laughs> yeah, look at this. <laughs> That's a lot of dice to roll for damage. Yeah, it's uh, 12 points of damage. 12 points of damage. Once again, this thing is just shredded out of the sky. It's a good thing, though. Get these these pests out of our way. Gone. Cuts it right in half. Oh, absolutely. Spray of blood. Yeah, blood just splatters everywhere. Zim will be. I'm the blood sucker now. Easy, Ozzy. (laughs) (laughs) Ozzy. (laughs) Zim would be whips around, lining up a shot with his Yakoa, but the blood from that Sturge burst that Copernicus made (laughs) shoots across his face, (laughs) blinding him temporarily as uh, he misses with his Yakoa attack. Um, Wait a minute. Sturges, go. Now. Doom. So, Zavril Dawn Tracker gets a Sturge. I'm rolling right handed, boys. Oh shit, Zavril. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we've got some stuff happening to you. Oh. First of all, you're gonna take some piercing damage. It's gonna be. 8 piercing damage. As, Ouch. Jeez. As it stabs into you, like, critically, it attaches itself to you. Everything in Chult's got to grab right on, <laughs> doesn't it? Mm-hmm. I noticed. <laughs> Chulting right. mosquitoes. Copernicus, <laughs> you're getting a Sturge. Once again, rolling rocks. What'd you hit? What AC? Natty 20. Ooh. Eight piercing damage once again. Yeah, so this thing sticks its syringe-like beak into you, and it attaches. And the last one, (laughs) Quincy. Rolling rocks. (laughs) Once again, I'm like, no, just kidding. Uh, This one misses you completely. I, too, am quick on my feet. All right, Zavril, you've got a couple, couple things you can do now. You can... Spend your action by attempting to rip this thing from you. Or you can leave it on you. <laughs> I mean, your choice. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take careful... Uh, you don't have... Just to let you know, you don't have to roll anything. You can, you can literally take your action and detach the Sturge without any kind of roll or check. <laughs> yeah, but that sounds like... Uh... Something bad could happen with that. Um, <laughs> how big are these things exactly? They're tiny. The stinger stays in you. So, like, so if I, if I was bird, aiming to hit the one that's 
I've been attached to uh, someone else. Say, could I hit it? I don't see why you couldn't. You know, if it were up to me, I'd say yeah, there was a percentile that you might do some damage to the person because it, it is a tiny creature. Right, right. Maybe if he misses, then there's a chance. Right. To hit. So are these the size of regular bats? Just with they just have this. The, uh, yeah, unfo- unfortunately, it just says tiny. Biscuits, so and tiny called? is a bit of a range. So yeah, let's go. I'd say they're maybe a little bit bigger than your standard fruit bat. <laughs> <laughs> but it's got a, a syringe fruit on its bats face. Are right, some of them big. are big, right? Oh, yeah. Is that fruit bats are the big ones? Fruit bats are uh, Well, what are the ones that we've got floating around the house? Little shit oh, bats. Those Standard are little issue. Shit ones, yeah. Standard issue. <laughs> little shit bats. All right, I, I will just pull the one on. A me bat now. shit. <laughs> are you going to rip it off? Yeah. All right, you got a couple D10s over there that I can borrow. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's funny you bring up the bats in the house because while we're fighting them in D&D, we're kind of ducking them. Flying, yeah. <laughs> flying them. <laughs> <laughs> Are they like the bats in the house? <laughs> we we do have bats in the belfry. All right, there. Uh, Zavril, you manage to <laughs> grab a hold of it and rip it off and throw it, and it just catches itself in air and starts fluttering around again back into the fray. Um, next up, Irame. Irame is going to draw her short bow. Gonna draw, gonna draw the bow. Okay. Yeah. Is that a bad? Why no, you, you can. Uh, oh, okay. So you're gonna draw. So you did you have a weapon at all out? No, you casted spells, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah, but I don't want to just keep casting spells. We're going into the Zinti territory, trying to try to. She's watching her magic yep. usage. All right. So you draw your bow. All right. Let's see an attack. Which one are you attacking? Um, as I draw my bow, I'll move um, diagonal up one to the left. Mm, okay. Diagonal up one. So are you but attacking gonna the you one in... on Copernicus? No. Well, no, I'm not going to fire my bow at Copernicus. Yeah, you're going to have a disadvantage yeah. on the attack. I'm going to fire the one down into the left. Well, with your bow? So you don't want to move then. Okay. All right, okay. that would yep. put me in melee. I'm sorry. I'm like not... <laughs> envisioning them five feet for me because I'm picturing them in the air. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, they're still within five feet flying around you. Okay, so I'll move. Can I just move down? Down yeah, a couple can... below Quincy there. Yep. So I'll move about ten feet away yep, take so a shot. So Arame moves. Uh, yep, so Arame moves. She's about ten feet away from the nearest Sturge, that the one that's uh, fighting Quincy. Or flapping around Quincy. It's a miss. Seven. Uh, yeah, your arrow fing, bounces off the cavern wall into the darkness. Next up, Quincy. Once again, he's going to thrust with his rapier. Fuck. Ah, six. Six misses, sadly. Oh, round three. We are not making quick work of these, my friends. I should you? focus. Half of them down in round three. That's not bad. Copernicus heart. You've got, once again, those options. Damn, it's stuck in you. You Ooh. can either... You can either detach, actually at the start, I'm sorry, uh, K-Way. What's up? Can you just break its neck? Uh, bef- before you were able to detach it, you took bleeding, you took bleeding damage, sorry. Uh, and it's gonna be um, 10 points of damage. What? And <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I read the wrong thing. Scratch that. So you're going to take bleeding damage real quick, and it's going to be six points of damage. That's still a lot. Yep, and and Copernicus, you as well, at the start of your turn, because you have one attached to you, you're going to take four points of blood loss damage. Just break his neck so he doesn't fly back around again. All right, now you can either detach it, or you can leave it in and attack. attack, uh, Yeah, with my empty hand. I'm going to palm it and cast uh, Eldric Blast. Right. Try to blast this thing right off me. So that is... Yes! Natural 18. All right. And that was this one right here. And that does Repelling Blast, so it's going to knock it back 10 feet and do... <laughs> <laughs> How much damage? I think just... Uh, Actually, it's 
Just one, one point of <laughs> Just damage. Just one damage. <laughs> yeah. it's get, and it, it, you said it gets knocked back ten feet. Yep, ten feet. <laughs> ten feet, and it takes one <laughs> point of damage. It's still alive. <laughs> it literally has two. These have two hit points. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? So it's bloodied. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just fucked that thing up. Took half its hit points down. <laughs> yeah, and one hit. Well, I feel like a blast. Not I just flying creatures. Copernicus knows, them. knowing that Irime and Quincy just haven't been in many battles, and see him missing so much. I wanted to leave this killing blow for them, so they'll feel good. I've already killed one. <laughs> <laughs> did you? Shit. Yeah. At least you did one damage and got it off you. It was, it was a good. Uh, it was a good attack. Good action. All right. Next up, Zimwa B chases it. <laughs> He's like, I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Natty 19, baby. Nice. Yeah. All right. One and yeah, he obliterates it with his Yakoa. Done. Two left. One on Zaveril and one on Quincy. Next up is Zaveril. Zaveril will. So the one that's not attached to me anymore. That's what I want to make certain of. <laughs> it's not, no, it's not attached. You ripped it off. All right, I will swing at it with my whips again. All right. Uh, 18. Uh, that's a hit. Seven slashes. Seven slashes is enough to destroy it. So do I get to move um, and then use my bonus attack as well? Yeah, I think so, actually. Or do the both attacks have to be on the same target? No. They don't. They could be at separate targets. All right, then. All right. So then I will move. You can move and take two attacks. Yes. Okay. Yeah, the second attack is a bonus action. Ah, okay. All right. And then from here, I will attempt to uh, hit that last one with my second whip. All right. Let's see it. <laughs> my fingers are crossed. <laughs> Uh, it's going to be a 17 to hit. That's a hit. Nice. All right, and that's going to be for six slashing. Zavril finishes off the final Sturge. Combat ends. Just snapping them out of the air. Boom, snap, snap. whip, whip, whip. Done. <sighs> Quincy lets out a breath and then uh, takes a look around, and if it seems like there's no more danger, he'll sheath his rapier. Zim will be... Does the same, relaxes his stance. Filthy critters. I must admit, I am a bit disappointed I did not get to strike at one. I'm certain you will have your chance, young Quincy. All right, yeah. The cave isn't that deep, you know? It's only uh, about 100 feet total, this ridge, you know? I think Quincy has a problem killing critters um, like that. So, yeah, you guys... Fin yeah, so as you guys collect yourselves... Uh, you don't hear anything else, but it's still there's still a few different uh, tunnel networks. Zim would be appears to know exactly, recognize the cave that you guys are now in, um, and you do see some rocks on the ground to where uh, that that had collapsed and fallen, uh, revealing that opening that lead, leading up. And um, yeah, Zim would be turns and says, "This is the way to the village," and he and he uh, starts to quietly move down the passageway. So if there are any um, branches and forks and stuff, um, Quincy will just try to mark, you know, just like with a scratch of a rock or something like that, just so that we know if we end up having to come back through here without uh, without Zimwabi. All right. And, uh, yeah, so eventually after winding down, maybe, uh, you know, maybe a hundred more feet or so, you come to the, the cave exit, and it opens up to a small path, overgrown path, it hasn't been used in a while, but you can make out down below, not nearly as high now, you're on the ground level now, but it's still a little bit of a slope down into the village uh, at this point, and as you're looking down into the village, all is quiet, but then you hear, out of the silence, drums. Drums. 
getting louder and louder, bouncing up. I pull out my loot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got a loot as well. We'll see you next time. Oh, oh come on. <laughs> Already? <laughs> <laughs>